Hi, baby. <laughs> Welcome to another Life More Light video. I thought you were going to set this up. <laughs> All right, we've got a lot of requests for a winterizing video, and I will admit I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it either, but winter is coming. We are going to show you the easiest way to winterize. We have done it both ways. We've done it the traditional way, what I would consider to be the traditional yeah. way. And then this is a less traditional way of doing it. Um, we came across this uh, option last winter when we were on the road and got stuck and needed to winterize. Mm -hmm. And we came across this div tool, yeah. device yeah. tool, and I think you're going to like it. Oh yeah, yeah. I think there's a lot of reasons to do it this way. Maybe like three. Three good reasons? That's not enough reasons. No, oh, I think three is enough. Hopefully three is enough reasons to be compelling. Okay, let's regretfully winterize. Yeah, let's do it. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to drain the water. So most RVs have a drain port at its lowest point and allow to allow all of the fresh water to drain out. Ours is behind the tire. This is just a real simple valve here. And you just turn it up and then it'll drain. I already drained it, so there's nothing coming out of there. Oh, I know. It's not an action shot. We'll put one in right here. How's that feel? Is that better? Now you can see it draining. Thank you. Yeah, it drained. And when you're done draining it, you want to make sure that the valve is closed. That's kind of important. Oh. So what do you do? Close the valve. This is open on ours. Opens up on ours. And you want to close the valve. Your camper might be different, but ours has a Truma Combi Eco 4. And before you winterize anything, there's some things you want to do in the Truma system to make sure that you bypass the Truma, because the last thing you want is antifreeze getting into that system. So let's go over the valves. There's two bypass valves, one here and one here. And it's important that those are turned off. Right now they're in the on position. I haven't changed anything. So water's able to move freely into the system and out of the system. And what you wanna do is close off that loop so there's no antifreeze that's getting into the Truma Combi. The next valve is this is the uh, outlet valve, so turning this on will get rid of all the water from the system. And then you want to flip the pressure relief valve. So I think we're ready to do the valves. So we turn this one and this one. Now the system loop is closed to bypass the Truma Combi. Then we'll open the valve to drain it. And we'll do the pressure relief valve. And now you can hear it a little bit. And if we go outside, we might be able to see it. Do you want to see it? Yeah. Let's go see it. Okay. Nothing came out. Aw, oh, Joe. I really wanted to see some come out. Whoa, it's coming out. Holy moly, I had no idea that was a thing. Still going. Sorry if I was a little loud there, guys. I haven't seen a lot of this stuff myself, so I am learning as we make these videos as well, and now I thought that was really cool. Now that the excitement of draining the water heater has, has subsided a bit, the water heater is completely drained. There's no water in it, and it's important to note that the valves now stay exactly as they are until the time comes to dewinterize. So I think we're ready for the pink stuff. I've got my full timers choice RV marine antifreeze and we've got our pump this pump assembly uh, comes with just two hoses and a pump and the directions are super super simple so let's get it hooked up and we'll show you how we do it here's the pump assembled this end here goes into the one gallon of the antifreeze and then this end just hooks up to the city water. It's a little cold outside today, so this isn't real flexible, but uh, we'll get it hooked up and get pumping here in a minute. The reason I think this is less traditional method is that 
Um, you're not putting anything in the fresh water tank and you're not gonna turn your water pump on, which is the way that traditionally, I think most people would winterize their water in their plumbing and their RV. So we do, do not have the pump on. The water pump is not on and it all works like that. We are going to start by winterizing the faucet closest to the city water inlet first. So for us, that is the shower, the outdoor shower. Um, one thing I noticed when we did this last year is that it actually seemed to take the longest to do this first pump where you pump here and get it out of here. But then after that, everything else was like one, two, three, boom. So we'll see how it goes this time. You do not want to pump this, this pump while everything is closed or the system's pressurized. You want to have a place for the antifreeze to go. So the first thing I'm gonna do is turn on the, well, the cold's closest. So I'm gonna turn on the cold faucet on the outdoor yes. shower. Oh, it's red. Just, so we've only turned on or opened the hot water faucet for the outdoor shower. And then I, I have to, oh, there's a little water in there. That's a good start. Okay, now he's gonna pump. And as soon as this turns pink, we don't need to pump anymore. Okay, Let's see how many pumps it takes. <laughs> Here we go. There's the pink. That's, not, well I'm not pink yet. Nope. Did you see all the water coming out? Too long though. Your feet are gonna be wet. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh, geez, <laughs> technical error. Yeah, this, honestly, I was surprised at how much water came out in this step. But after this, it's not like there that. There we go. There. Right, can you see it? All right. Wait. Can you see it? <laughs> we can turn it off. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to close this hot water faucet and I'm going to turn on the cold. And I bet it's gonna be so much faster already. On. There we go. No, I want a little bit more for. Yeah? yeah? Good, yeah, that's pink. I guess it was already up there, that far. Yeah. There, done. And I'm gonna close the cold. Okay, the outdoor shower is winterized. Put it back. Let's go inside and do the other outlets, the other faucets. This faucet has one control, but I know if I go all the way to the top, then I'm getting cold. And if I go all the way to the bottom, I'm getting hot. So I'm gonna make sure that I open it in both directions and get pink both ways, but. All right, Joe, I am ready to pressurize the kitchen sink. I have it open on the top. Here you go. Okay. Clear. All right, got it. Okay. That's so fast. Hot and cold? I'm doing hot now. Okay. Yep. Solid pink. It's that fast. This is so e easy, guys. You have to try this. Okay, on to the toilet. To do the toilet, I'm just gonna need to pull that lever to flush open and hold it there, I believe. It doesn't have to be fully open because that's really just to release it into the tank. But here we go. Okay, I'm ready, Joe. All right, here we go. Okay, we got clear. All right, we're pink. Okay, the one other thing we have to do is the sprayer, the rinse sprayer, okay? So all I'm gonna do, the rinse sprayer, is that a thing? Okay, so this, this toilet sprayer, I'm just gonna hold the button so that it's open and then signal to Joe that he can pump. Okay, Joe, I'm ready. Oh, you also have to hold the valve, got it. You also have to hold the valve open on the toilet because that's the only way that you get water to go through the sprayer. I need more. Okay, one more, just to be safe. 
Okay. All right, got it. Done. I have opened the faucets and closed the faucets. They'll all remain closed now until I dewinterize. And the last thing that I will do before I pack everything up and put it away is put about a cup of antifreeze down the kitchen drain. And that's it. We winterized. Hey, we did it. I did not think we would be smiling when this was done because I wasn't really looking forward to winterizing, but it's satisfying to yeah. do. Boom. Check. Yep. And it works pretty easily. It really does. So I said in the beginning, there were three reasons. I think I thought of a fourth, but and go I ahead. I think we have at least three. Right. At least three. <laughs> go ahead. I think one is, is that it's pretty cost effective this way. When we filled up the other tanks, the old way we would use gallons of the antifreeze. And now we've used a little better than, well, we got about maybe a third of this left right now. The pump is like anywhere between 11 and $14 and a gallon of antifreeze is between maybe two and a half bucks and five bucks a gallon. And you can use the pump year after year, so yep. it's not like you have to buy one every year. You just tuck it away. We kept the packaging and tucked it away. Yep. We're people that go from cold weather to warmer weather in the winter and then have to come back to the cold. So we often winterize before we make it home while we're traveling. And if we only have to pack one bottle of this stuff in a pump, that is way better than packing multiple bottles of this stuff. I think our first trip out, I brought five of them because I really didn't know what we would need. We wouldn't be stuck without <laughs> enough. Yeah. Well, and because it was late in the season, we didn't know if we'd be able to buy it and just show up someplace when that part of the season was already done. Right. And the last reason I think it's a great way to do it is because when you put the pink stuff in your fresh tank, you do drain it, you do rinse it, but the, you always, it still smells and it still has a taste to it. And we filter our water, but- But even in the filtered water, there's still there's a little still, bit like of it's a taste. Slight, it's slightly off and it is, you know, they tell you it's like safe. Yeah, right. But, but nobody wants to be drinking. The less you have <laughs> in your fresh tank, yeah. that's gonna be in food you cook or whatever, the better. the better off you are. I yep. think, yep. personally. Yeah, and it took probably three full cycles of water through there before that taste went away, even in the filtered water. When he says cycles, he means full tanks of fresh mm -hmm. water put into it, drained out of it, put into it, drained out of it, over and over again. That was a really good point. Yeah, time. this way it doesn't go in the fresh water tank. It just mm -hmm. goes, I mean. Just goes to the affected lines. Yeah. Whether that's your outdoor shower, your sink, hot and cold, toilet, if you have an indoor shower, I mean, all of those lines and those connections, if water gets in there and freezes, it'll be disastrous by spring. It, it will break those areas. So you want to make sure that there's ethylene glycol or antifreeze in all of those areas. And this does that. Yeah. And the, um, you know, we're using the city water inlet, but if you want to use the fresh, if you want to make sure that the plumbing from the fresh um, opening on an RV, there's a city water inlet. And then separate to that, there's a hole where you can fill your fresh water tank. You could always pour a little bit down your fresh water tank to make sure that the plumbing has some coverage there too. So this is, this is what we're using the city water inlet. This is the, the hole for where you put in fresh water and you just open that up and put oh, just a tiny bit in there. And we use a funnel to do that. I actually have a funnel in the trailer just as a just in case thing. And if it just it wouldn't take much to just make sure you have that covered. But it's messier. We weren't really skilled in funnel things. <laughs> I remember doing it and there was antifreeze all over my hands, all over my shoes. It, it was kind of messy. I think this way like, is less you messy. You have to have the right tempo because if you pour too fast, it comes over yeah, the it, funnel. Yeah. If you pour too slow, you stand there for hours. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's a whole different game, yeah. guys. You're going to love this. You got to try it. Yeah. Hey. As always, give it a thumbs up if you like this video, if you found it helpful. Don't forget to comment. Comments are always appreciated. We read all of them and, and we write back to all of them. <laughs> and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching Life, Life More Light and we hope that this was helpful. Bye.